Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 5 verses 1 through 5. Hello, Watershed family. This Holy Week, we are focusing on the biblical idea of peace. And whenever we seek to define a word from scripture, we should never start with the English word. Webster's Dictionary is not a great resource for us when defining biblical peace. For example, Webster's Dictionary defines peace as freedom from disturbance, as tranquility, as freedom from conflict. But biblical peace does not necessarily mean freedom from conflict. Biblical peace is much richer than that. The idea of biblical peace comes from the Hebrew word shalom. And shalom is a beautifully rich word. It means completeness, soundness, welfare, prosperity, friendship and covenant relationship with God. When God's people were said to be experiencing shalom, it meant that there was prosperity, not only for themselves individually, but for their neighborhood, for their community, and for their surrounding nations. God's shalom was supposed to bring abundant life for his people. And then that abundant life was meant to then pour out and spread out into all nations so that all nations might know that Yahweh is the one true God, that Yahweh is the only way to true peace. The opposite of peace is to be divided and broken. Because of our sin, we are divided in our hearts and in our spirits. Because of sin, we are divided in our relationships with one another, in our relationships with creation, in our relationship with God. There is, there is fighting and conflict, conflict that seeks to destroy and tear apart, to break everything into scattered pieces that we cannot within our own power put back together. And so when Jesus came as a human being, he came to restore us, to bring us shalom, a kind of peace that only God can give us because we cannot put the broken pieces of our lives back together. We cannot restore our divided and broken hearts. We cannot restore our divided and broken relationships with one another. And we certainly cannot restore our divided relationship between us and God, our creator, who longs to have a whole and beautifully prosperous, abundant, loving relationship with us as his creatures. And so you just read about Jesus entering into the temple and seeing that the place where God's people were supposed to come and worship him, where the nations were supposed to be able to come and experience the shalom of God, the walls of the temple had been used to divide people and to keep out the nations. And this did not please Jesus because Jesus' people were supposed to be people of shalom, people who are committed to bringing prosperity, not to just themselves and their own people and their own nation, but to the whole 
earth. Jesus cried out, is it not written that my house should be a house of prayer for the nations? And God's people had instead turned it into a house to keep the nations out, to keep themselves separated and divided. That is not the kind of peace. Jesus came, Jesus died to give us. He came to fill our hearts with peace, to restore us from the inside out, to make us whole, healthy, vibrant human beings, full of life, joy, love, and shalom. And then to move us, fill us with the spirit and move us to go out and spread that love, that joy, that shalom to those who do not yet have salvation and shalom from God. As the people of God, as followers of Jesus Christ, people who claim to believe in him, we, our bodies, are God's temple. We are supposed to be people who create spaces of prayer where the nations can come and experience God's shalom. And I want you to ask yourself today, if Jesus were to come and inspect your temple, what would he find? Would he find a place of shalom? Would he find a person filled with his love and joy who is seeking to extend that love and joy and peace to those around you? What would he find? Are you filled with shalom? And is the shalom of God extending from you and your life onto the lives of others around you.